Hi, my name is Mass and I'm from Flowhow. And uh, I'm back here with a small introduction to injection compression molding, also called ICM. Um, uh, injection compression molding is normally where you uh, fill in, fill the melt into a cavity that is not totally closed and uh, instead of using packing pressure you just uh, clamp the mold together and uh, use the clamping force as a packing pressure to the part. This gives a uniform clamping force all over the part and you can get more flat parts than normal. Uh, and you can also uh, maybe pa pack some areas uh, that are not possible to pack. Another way to do it is to have a specific uh, uh, cylinder uh, moved, moving forward after the cavity is filled. Then you compress an area and use the compression from maybe a hydraulic cylinder uh, that will uh, compress the melt and uh, make the packing pressure. In this case, I will do the last option and uh, and use this surface down here as a packing pressure. But I'll show you how to set it up and start from scratch. So um, I'll make a new run. I'll go to uh, injection compression molding. Here, I'll import the geometry. It's a very simple one. I double click it and give it a part. Then uh, I will put in a runner. I will like it five millimeters from here. So uh, if I put it here in the middle and say, yeah, one millimeter, that's maybe fine. Double click it again and call it a hot runner gate. Yeah, close. Um, of course, it cannot be out there so I'll just use the tool move I mark both then I will just click here five millimeters and click here then I know it's five millimeters inside the part then I'll go to uh, the meshing of course you can put in uh, cooling if you want but I'll just keep this example as simple as possible um, I'll give it a seeding let's just have one And now generate the surface mesh. I'll go back to model. And um, then I'll have here the compression zone. I can add that here. Um, yeah. And uh, if I click here, it automatically gives me one here. That's actually not what. I would like because I want it to compress from this side so it's this surface down here that's compressed. Um, so um, I'll just change the vector so it's compressed from the other side here. And um, <clears throat> then I will... Um, uh, it takes now the whole surface but I'll just remove some um remove and i'll take this one and i'll remove this and if i take it from the side and here then i have this surface and of course you can add afterwards and so on the stroke um here is in millimeter that means how far will i move the um this surface forward during the packing two millimeters in this case i'll say okay <clears throat> and now i got the compression zone here defined then i have to mesh it um, before i mesh it i can go in here and say hybrid mesh compression zone it's prism uh, elements you like i would like that and i want 20 of these you can also add uh, a surface like this. Um, 
but the mesh will be um, uh, will be very uh, distorted. So and it doesn't add anything actually to the packing. So um, uh, surfaces nearly or in the opening direction should not normally be added. In in um, yeah as a normal to the opening direction. I just click here and then I generate this solid mesh and compression zone. Should turn out quite fast. Yeah, and now you can see I got uh, these 20 layers uh, of prism layers here. That's the compression zone. And I say final check. Yes, that's fine. And now I got to put up the process. I'll just choose a material first. I just use an ABS like this. And then I'll go into the process. And uh, for the machine, I'll just give it my standard 5000 bar because I want a machine that has unlimited forces. And for the packing pressure, which we are not using, I type in 100, doesn't matter. And then the filling time, I fill it in 0.5 of a second. Uh, of course, you can find out what's the correct filling time by looking at the melt front temperature. But in this case, I just guess because I didn't uh, investigate it, uh, some results before. And uh, you can see now we don't have a packing zone here because when we have filled the cavity, we shut off the nozzle, it's done automatically. And then we use the compression as uh, the packing pressure. Here's the temperatures of the melt and mold. I just go to next. And then we have to define the, the compression. And of course, uh, it's, it's not that easy. But uh, if we know something about packing time, how, how long time does it take to freeze and so on, uh, I would say uh, in this wall thickness could be 15 seconds. And uh, here's the compression direction. You can't change it because it's defined by the meshing. The same with the compression gap. You can't change it. If you want to change it, you have to copy the run and make it a different uh, compression gap. And then you have a um, volume filled. This volume filled is given by knowing the volume that the system knows the volume of this uh, area down here because when you have filled the part up to 80 percent it's filled here but there's a lot of material out here then it would be used to fill when moving this this uh, cylinder forward in that direction then uh, it will fill the rest of the part and uh, you'll then go directly to packing when the part is 100% filled and it will squeeze the material together as it shrinks. So in this case, I'll not change this one. Um, and then we have the compression speed. Maximum compression speed means if the resistance um, of moving this uh, forward is not exceeding this uh, compression force, it will move the, the compression forward with 10 millimeter per second. Um, let's say we just move it with two millimeter per seconds. Then it takes one second of moving forward. Four maybe. And you can profile this movement, but of course start simple. And then you have the maximum compression force if you have maybe, let's say we have uh, 500 ton, uh, 50 ton on this uh, cylinder, then you can say this is what it can deliver. But uh, in this case, we'll just use, let's say, uh, 8 ton for this. So uh, I'll hit in 8 here. Then it's scaled down like this. Then I'm actually using the 8. This out is a general setting. So uh, I go to next. So what happens now is that uh, when it's filled, 
79.7 percentage around here. It will move this surface forward with a speed of 4 millimeter per second until it hits a resistance that exceeds this uh, 8 ton and afterwards uh, exceed to this then it will keep a pressure from here up on this surface on for 8 ton until it's ended in 15 seconds so we say next here i don't change anything here uh, so uh, i say finish and now the process is done then i need here for analysis type in this case if you have cooling you also had to, to do a transient cool first then fill pack and transient cool and warp but now we just use this injection uh, analysis where we have fill pack together and a warpage of course this is a process that is often used in um, optical uh, um, uh, uh, parts because then you can mold something without any stress. Um, yes, and the compression in this case. I don't need this. I don't need this. Warp. I just use this. You don't have actually just to use just use the normal settings, and then you just start the analysis. And what do we, do we get from it then? I have I ran some uh, simulations up front, and um, I ran first uh, injection molding, uh, a normal injection molding where I just kept the packing pressure here, and of course it freeze off freeze here, and you can't keep a packing pressure out here, so I'll end up with a higher shrinkage out here than here, and sink marks also. But if I look at the um, uh, warpage and try to measure, I'll just go to this. And then I, if I measure the um, uh, linear shrinkage, I can measure it here between two points. A linear shrinkage is just, a, a, you can say a measurement between, a relatively measurement between two points. Where were they before? calculating the shrinkage and where do they end out. So here I got a shrinkage of 0.65, which is normal for ABS. And then if I measure it out here, I have a high shrinkage because I can't keep the packing pressure out in this uh, big area. So um, if I measure, I also did uh, injection compression molding on the same. So if I measure the same uh, areas here in the injection compression. Um, I'll just uh, copy the probes, oh, copy the probes from run one, and I can use exactly the same places. Right click, copy probes to run two. Okay. And then I can jump to run two. And now I have the probes, then I can just put in the distance between probe one, probe two, save. And also the other one, probe three and probe four, save and close. And now we can see um, we got a, some different uh, in the uh, shrinkage, but we, of course we also got a different uh, packing conditions. So uh, in this case, we're a bit lower on the linear shrinkage and out here we are much closer to each other. And when we have uniform shrinkage uh, in a part, uh, we normally get totally flat parts and without sink marks. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, if I should optimize this, I would go for maybe a higher uh, pressure on the cylinder so instead of having um, was it eight ton I would go maybe to uh, to a 16 ton and try again 
to find out if I can reach the same linear shrinkage. And um, one thing that uh, we also just would have a look on is the, just get rid of the probes and the measurement, is the filling. I can also hide the compression zone. So if I look at this, I want the compression zone. So if I look at the filling, you can see here, it comes out, the melt into the part starts, and then it comes here. And now, uh, seven. Okay, and I have to move this gently forward. And now the compression stone here, it's 80% filled. Now the compression zone starts to fill. Actually, this uh, nozzle is shut off and uh, the milk can't run backwards out of the cavity. And uh, it fills up by compressing this compression zone. And when it's here, it starts compress with the uh, eight ton. And uh, when the part starts to shrink, the, the, this uh, surface can move further down. So um, this is how to set up and some of the results that you can get uh, from, uh, from this. Of course, you have all the other normal results also. So um, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.